Oh, man, hope you didn't forget the things we touched on in Chapter 8 with all the density talk and Maxwell stress tensor, because now it's back. So, the statement is, find all elements of the Maxwell stress tensor for a monochromatic plane wave traveling in the z-direction and linear polarized in the x-direction. Does your answer make sense? Remember that negative uh, t represents the momentum flux density. How is the momentum flux density related to the energy density in this case? All right, well, we know that the electric and magnetic waves for monochromatic are given, and Maxwell stress tensors unit entry for Tij is equal to this. Notice that the delta Ij here is equal to the uh, Dirac delta, which means that our indices need to match in order to be 1, and if they don't match, they're 0. Cool, we like that. All right, uh, however, let's note that we only have one direction for E and one direction for B, so a lot of these things are going to cancel. And let's take this chunk by chunk. If we are only going to consider the electric component, so the first part of the Maxwell stress tensor, then we note that the electric field is only in the X direction. Okay, fair enough. So you see that delta XX goes to 1, delta XY goes to 0, EY goes to zero, uh, and then we'll do one more. So EZ goes to zero and delta XZ goes to zero. Since we only have one thing, uh, a one component field in X, and the Dirac delta cancels to zero, what we see here is that this consolidates really, really quickly to the diagonal terms only. Okay, so everything off diagonal, where you have mixed matching indices, you have a zero term either from the Dirac delta or the fact that the field doesn't exist there. So here we see that the electric uh, component of the um, Maxwell stress tensor is equal to epsilon naught EX times EX minus 1 half delta XX E squared plus epsilon negative 1 half delta YY since the um, Y terms in the uh, EYY, EY times EY are zero. Everything boils down nicely. And similarly for the fact that B is only uh, B is only in the y direction. What we have here is a delta xx, a plus by by minus delta yy, and a plus uh, delta zz. All right, cool. So as you see, all these off diagonal terms are zero, and if we join the electric and magnetic components, okay, well, we see that the entry for txx is equal to this, and we just simplify it in. Um, and it uh, simplifies really quick, actually, because EXX is equal to the E field in this case. So we have E squared minus 1 half E squared, which goes to positive 1 half. And then we see that B squared is equal to E squared over C squared um, by definition in this case. So we have everything in terms of E squared. So here, then, if we uh, put in the definition of C squared, which is epsilon naught, over, which is uh, would go to times epsilon naught, mu naught, the mu naughts would cancel, and we're left with epsilon naught e squared, and then we have one half epsilon naught e squared minus epsilon naught e squared, which goes to zero. Easy money. Similarly, for TYY, if we do the same thing, we get a zero term there doing the same substitution method. So this is really weird, but really cool. So TZZ is the only one that has a part there, and what we see here is that we have epsilon naught um, or excuse me, negative one half epsilon naught e naught or epsilon naught e squared plus one over mu naught b squared, and if we let to see this is equal to u the energy density, who would have thought? Okay, so the Maxwell stress tensor boils down to actually one component, which is a TZZ component, and if we simplify this down, and we put, substitute the e squared over c squared in, and we write everything in terms of e squared. We had a um, negative epsilon naught uh, e naught squared cosine squared kz minus omega t plus delta. And uh, actually, this does make sense. The momentum of these fields is in, is in the x direction. Notice that the monochromatic is showing that the propagation is in the x direction, polarizing the x and y. Okay. So, uh, with that, the momentum of these fields is in the, x, in the z direction and is being transported 
and is being transported in the z-direction. So yes, it does make sense that TZZ should be the only non-zero element in the Maxwell stress tensor. In chapter 8, it was discussed that the negative uh, tensor dotted with the DA is the rate of change uh, at which the momentum crosses some area uh, DA. Here we have no momentum crossing areas oriented in the x or y direction. The momentum per unit time per unit area flowing across some surface oriented in the z direction is negative TZZ equal U, which is equal to the uh, G, which is the density, uh, momentum density times C. So delta P, the linear momentum, is equal to GCA delta T. And if we see we get delta P over delta T is equal to GCA substitute the g the negative tzz and for gc uh and again these were two different things and then we see this is equal to the momentum per unit time crossing some area a evidently the momentum flux density is equal to the energy density how freaking cool a lot of density talk here uh chapter eight go back and revisit but these results are definitely going to be used over and over again in the conceptual construction that we will have moving forward in chapter 10, 11, and 12.